Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to see you out on this crazy weather day. I guess March Madness isn't just about basketball. Welcome to the Rotary Club of York, where people of action committed to service above self and honoring the four-way tests of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Cal Weary will lead us in our opening song, The Star Spangled Banner, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Michael Reichman will offer the invocation and Jean Truthart will introduce our visitors. Rotarians. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon, Rotarians. Please join me by preparing yourselves in whatever way you're most comfortable praying. Look around at our world. There's manicured grass, clean streets, relatively few homeless, displaced people. Our clothes are washed and think about the food we've just eaten. It's fit for a king. A recent ban on energy imports is certainly going to create economic strain on all of us. But just like World War II, think about what the average citizen living in the US at that time experienced on a daily basis. It's probably mere inconveniences compared to the blood and suffering of those in Europe. And it's quite possible that scenario plays out again. With the carnage in Europe while we're peacefully inconvenienced in the sheltered US. May we never ever take that fact for granted. May our leaders be inspired to not just promote peace, but offer refuge to the citizens of Ukraine as they avoid the destruction of their homeland and even offer refuge to the citizens of Russia who through no fault of their own are living under the tyrannical reign of a megalomaniac despot. For this, we give thanks, amen. Good afternoon. I'm pleased to have the honor of introducing our guests for today's meeting. When I call your name, please stand and then remain standing until President Jackie has welcomed you. Joe Alfano, Home Club North York, guest of Rich Randall. Lindsay Barna, guest of Club Communications. The following are guests of our speaker extraordinaire, Bobby Andalea. Tony Campisi, Adam Cavanaugh, Dan Cavanaugh, 
Matt Hartman and Randy Kissinger. Melanie Chrisimar, guest of Club Communications. Rita Hewitt, guest of Chad Myers. Daniel Lorenzo, guest of Ben Ott. Cora Taylor, guest of Randy Rawitz. Jeff Poulis, guest of Al Sykes. And Gregory DeCandia, guest of Cal Weary. Well, welcome to all of our guests. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, so exciting to have two of our finest philanthropists back with us again this week. Thank you. Let's make this a regular thing. Love seeing your faces. Thank you all. I hope that you find this program to be very informative, enjoyable, and you'll be proud of your mom and your wife, I know. So thank you for being here, Rotarians. Please help me welcome our visitors. The Little League Committee meets at 1.30 today in the Terrace Room. Anyone with an interest in knowing more about Little League, please plan to join them so you can maybe decide to become part of their incredible committee. The RCY board will meet tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. via Zoom. The Horm Farm Center is in need of a few hardworking brawny volunteers who enjoy heavy lifting this Saturday, March 13th from eight to noon. The farm team and volunteers will be milling nine oak timbers donated by the York Water Company into dimensional lumber for the Horn Farm fire recovery and efforts. Interested volunteers who are ready for a workout should contact Rotarian and Horn Farm Center Executive Director Alexis Campbell. We have a new billboard in downtown York. Very excited to share. It is on North George Street next to the York Academy Regional Charter School. Lamar Advertising has offered billboard space to Rotary Clubs in our district, and many of us are taking advantage of that. We've chosen to promote membership with this opportunity this month, which really ties into our March to 300 initiative. You may remember that last week we launched an initiative to help with the Ukraine relief efforts, and the CEF Charitable Endowment uh, Fund Board voted to do a match of $5,000 if we could raise $5,000 in our club. We had a wonderful donor anonymously step up and offer $5,000 last week. So let's give that anonymous donor a round of applause. However, they are asking that we continue this initiative. We've already raised over $1,000 for that initial 5,000. We wanna keep that momentum building. We'd like to be able to give a contribution of $15,000 to this relief effort. Rotaries all around the world are getting on board to help with this effort. So we think it's gonna be a tremendous impact. Just so you know, there are 52 Rotary clubs in the Ukraine with over 1,000 members. And now for our member moment. <laughs> Andy Mears came to America when he was in the third grade. His parents moved here from Jamaica for better job opportunities and once settled, brought their two children to the country. Andy enjoyed growing up in York and says it was really cool to see snow for the first time. He recalls playing baseball as a youth and traveling to Columbia and Lancaster County for a game. He said that was the longest trip he had taken since being in America, and it felt like he was going to the edge of the earth. He and his wife, Connie, have been married for 31 years and have two children, 24 and 21. They met at York High and dated through college. Andy studied at Penn State, earning a degree in landscape architecture. He led a pretty quiet life growing up, so college was really quite an experience for him. He was housed with not only architecture students, but arts and theater majors as well. And he says the college experience was eye-opening as he was exposed to things he hadn't seen before, like shaving in the dorm bathroom while the guy next to him was applying makeup. College, he says, was the very best thing that happened to him, learning about the unique differences in people and understanding that there's a whole wide world out there to experience. And if he thought Lancaster was the edge of the earth, certainly State College was another planet. Andy became a member of the Rotary Club of York in 2004. You may remember Tom Warman. He was his proposer. 
He'd been familiar with Rotary though before that because his wife was part of the group study exchange to France, which was led by past president Fred Fay. When Andy joined the club, he became very involved with the youth exchange committee where he remains a member. Early in his career, he was a partner in a small landscape architecture firm downtown, which was very successful meeting their five-year goal in year one. But he eventually left the firm and made the move to Johnson, Marmarin, and Thompson, where he's worked for the last 15 years, specializing in park and recreation design. Andy and Connie love travel and plan to visit all 50 states. They're getting pretty close with only 11 remaining. He's a big sports fan and is planning to go to Pittsburgh next weekend for the first round of the NCAA men's basketball tournament. Andy, we're glad your family settled in York. Thank you for making Rotary and Youth Exchange a priority in your life experience. And now past president Brian Tate with a scholarship update. Thank you, President Jackie. Today I'm standing in for uh, Diane Marino, the chair of the Student Education Committee. Uh, today the Student Education Committee is asking you to check out our new York Rotary Scholarships page on our website and share it broadly to your contacts throughout the community. And so I see that Ben has brought up our uh, website. If you're not familiar with it, scroll across um, all of the tabs so you can learn more about our club and the things that we provide to the community. Um, let's go to the how we help and then pull down scholarships and go ahead and click that Ben. So you'll see some great photos from scholarship presentations here at Rotary and a description of our program. Um, students who want to apply will click on the apply here button but don't do that yet Ben. Um, but they can also scroll down and see information about each scholarship. So go ahead and scroll down. We list each scholarship with criteria for scholarship scholarship award being given, a biographical description of the scholarship and the donor who provided the opportunity, a photo of the donor who created that scholarship. So you can see in this list, there's the Bush Scholarship, which is a four-year scholarship for academic achievement, the Mangold Scholarship, which is also a four-year scholarship for academic achievement, the Chronic Scholarship, which is one time, um, the Deal Scholarship, a one-year engineering scholarship, the Smith Scholarship, which is a one-year agriculture scholarship, the Cayley Scholarship, which is a one-year music scholarship, the Hayes Scholarship, which is a one-year equine scholarship for juniors, seniors, or graduate students, um, the Wagman Scholarship, which is a one-year nursing scholarship at your college for juniors or seniors, the non-traditional student scholarship, a one-year scholarship for someone who went to college later in adulthood, and finally, our Service Above Self Scholarship, the new scholarship that was added last year, which is for a junior um, and senior year uh, focused on academic achievement and community service. As you can see, this page is also a great way to honor the wonderful donors who've stepped up to provide. Donors like Carol Wagman and Fred Rosenmiller, um, who are providing funds that will live forever through our charitable endowment fund and provide those valuable resources to students who need them. And we encourage all members of York Rotary to consider creating their own legacy for the club. So go back up to the top and when you click apply here, then go ahead and go to that box with apply here. It will direct folks to the Foundation for Enhancing Communities, which is administrating the new online application process. So then when you go to that gold block, which says apply now, go ahead and click that. From there, it will launch students to the online process for electronic application, which is also new. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to check this out for yourselves. Please share it broadly. There was a Facebook post from the club last week about the scholarship page, which you can share with your Facebook friends. But if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Diane Marino, the chair of the committee, or to myself. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, Brian, and thank you to Diane Marino and her committee for the great work that you've been doing all these years. As you can see, our scholarships continue to grow and it's largely due to your generosity that that's happening. So thank you that you're making all these opportunities so available to students throughout the county. At this time, it gives me pleasure to introduce Eric Menzer, who has 
Actually, no, Eric, so sorry. So sorry. So sorry. I would have said, let's just go ahead and do Eric, but Phil is halfway here, so. <laughs> Phil is marching up to do a March to 300 announcement about membership. For those who didn't hear that, she said, please to introduce, and I got confused, so I sat back down. <laughs> Membership committee, just want to give some brief updates. Uh, of course, we're underway with our March to 300. So those who have been brainstorming, thinking about introducing guests to the club uh, for possible membership, please continue to bring them. A lot of guests today, which is fantastic to see. Uh, now let's turn those guests into proposed members. Uh, currently, we sit at 288 members. Assuming that those who we uh, propose get approved by the board tomorrow morning. Um, we do have two who are closer to um, membership applications, so that puts us right at 290. 300 minus 290, we need 10 more individuals to hit our goal of March to 300, um, so hopefully you can all help with that. How do we help? Just a reminder, who are we looking for? Who makes it easy for the membership committee and the board to approve membership? Bring people who are owners, officers, managers of established or recognized businesses future leaders within recognized businesses who we might call up and comers. Anyone who has recently retired, we all know we have a lot of committees that they could help with. Um, small business owners in, in, in business for at least three years, leaders in community service, elected officials, or even family members of existing Rotarians. So hopefully one of those items sparks one or two uh, proposed mem or possible members for proposal. Thank you so much. We'll look forward to seeing a lot more guests in the near future. And I just want to say that what we're seeing with the new members that we've been bringing on this year is that they're already getting engaged. We're seeing a lot of them visit committees to determine which ones they want to be a part of them. Some of part of some of them have already signed up for more than once. That that's really great to see. That's what really builds the Rotary experience. And now, I guess it does really bring me great pleasure to introduce Eric Menzer to talk about the offsite at the York Revolution. I am positive we're ready for baseball. Thanks, Jackie. So I want to start with just a couple of quick questions. First of all, just show of hands. Who recognizes the name Rob Manfred? Show of hands. Who knows that name? Rob Manfred is the current commissioner of Major League Baseball. And who knows uh, whether the Major League Baseball season will start on time this year? Show of hands. The answer, of course, is no, it won't, because as the commissioner of baseball, Rob Ritt Manfred represents the owners who have locked out the players and they remain engaged in what appears to be an intractable labor negotiation. Now, who knows, show of hands, if that affects the York Revolution schedule? Well, you're about to all know that no, it doesn't. The major league schedule has nothing to do with us. We will, in fact, start on time with the rest of uh, affiliated minor league baseball. So none of the players who play at the single A, double A, triple A level are part of the collective bar bargaining agreement. So all of affiliated minor league baseball, uh, along with all the partner leagues like ours, will start on time. For us, that means opening at home on May 3rd. And finally, who thinks it's a good idea to have this at the podium at a rotary meeting? Too soon? too soon? All right. Sorry, Jackie. But this is relevant. This is relevant to the off-site meeting. Uh, so we will be back at People's Bank Park this year. I hope you'll all be there. Mark your calendars April 20th. We will be back inside at the 1741 Club where we met in 2019. Um, we will again welcome Atlantic League President Rick White. And this is relevant uh, because this baseball is actually pretty special. This is not a Rawlings baseball. This is a baseball that says Drake on it. Uh, this is a proprietary baseball to the Atlantic League um, that is also now being licensed and sold to the other partner leagues. And that's probably not in and of itself interesting to you, but it's an example of the kinds of things that Rick talks about every year when he comes and visits us, the kind of things he talks about the Atlantic League doing uh, along with other partner leagues. And so there are a lot of exciting developments this year. Um, uh, to, to hear from Rick. Mark Mason, our field manager, will be there along with the team again. So we'll meet the team um, that we're very excited about. And of course, if we're really lucky, we'll get to hear Brian Tate lead us in take me out to the ball game. And if we're extremely lucky, we'll get to hear Michael Reichman find the baseball references in the Old Testament. Um, 
Challenge? Accepted? Accepted. All right. And where's Brian? Accepted? All right. All right. I, I look forward every year, Brian, to you leading us and take me out to the ball game before we speak. There's a lot of cool stuff going on at the ballpark this year that I'll also have the opportunity to talk about, including a very exciting announcement coming this Monday. Watch for that about a new partnership between the Revs and York College of Pennsylvania that we're very excited to, to bring to the community. So again, uh, pre-registration will be required. Watch for that information, but mark your calendars for that very popular annual meeting on April 20th. Thank you. Good thing you took that baseball with you. Um, and if we're extremely fortunate, we will hear from president-elect nominee, Aaron Jacobs, who will lead us in the Star Spangled Banner on that day. So that's not a meeting you wanna miss. A lot of talent coming together, a lot of fun. And now my distinct pleasure to introduce Frank Dittenhafer, who will introduce our program. Thank you, President Jack. It's my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Bobby Ann DeLeo, the Executive Director of the York County Literacy Council. And Bobby Ann, as you know, is a member of our Rotary Club and our Literacy Committee, of course. She is a York College graduate, serves on the Adult Education Coalition of the South Central Region, Healthy York's Leadership Group, and Access and Empowerment Committee, the Pennsylvania Association for Adult Continuing Education, and the Confronting Racism Coalition. Bobby Ann is also a board member with the White, White Rose Leadership Institute. That's the organization which brings Give Local York to our community. She received a York Federal Fellowship in 2012, and she now serves as chair of the York Federal, Fe Federal Fellows Selection Committee. I know Bobby Ann from serving recently on the Literacy Council Board and from providing some pro bono assistance to help them find a new home and then designing some renovations to provide an environment with dignity and purpose as Bobby Ann kept reminding everyone. That experience took over four years and work, working with Bobby Ann left a, a lasting impression on me. It all started one day with Bobby Ann handing me her floor plan for their new home, which was a freehand sort of drawing with about a hundred stickers on it, emojis, post-it notes. And I still have this masterpiece somewhere. Um, the project concluded about a year ago with the move-in and occupancy by the Literacy Council of 1416 6th Avenue. Many of you know Bobby Ann as one of the most amicable, fun, humorous, collaborative persons you ever meet. She is also passionate, resourceful, and exceedingly dedicated, particularly when it comes to literacy and eliminating literacy in your county. Her commitment, dedication, and support to adult learners, the students, is impressive. She is one of those rare persons who does whatever it takes to get something done and to accomplish a goal. Please welcome Bobby Ann DeLeo. We're gonna put this here so we don't spill it. Hi, everybody. I've got this timekeeper because otherwise Jackie has the hook. Um, so let me do that, okay. And uh, first I wanna thank Frank. Frank is a very quiet but wonderful gift to this community and I believe you all know that. So um, yeah, hand it over. He'll pay me later, okay. Um, no, absolutely true, absolutely true. Uh, I wanna first thank my family for being here today. Uh, my sons, Adam 
and Daniel Cavanaugh. Thank you for being here, guys. Um, they have been volunteers or voluntolds uh, for the York County Literacy Council for more than half their lives. I figured that out this morning and I'm like, oh, wow, okay. Um, and then I also wanna thank my husband, Randy Kissinger. Uh, Randy, who's sitting over there um, has two spare pair of glasses for when I lose these. Um, and that's support, everybody, that is support. So in truth, um, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't have been able to dedicate 20 years to a career with the York County Literacy Council if it wasn't for my, my family, my very supportive and understanding family um, and friends like you all. So, all right, let's see who, I'm a bit of a nervous speaker, so forgive me right up front. Um, let's see who is in the room who knows anything about the Literacy Council. So I'm gonna ask that you please stand if I, call that group and, uh, and remain standing for me, okay? So if you are a board member with the York County Literacy Council, would you, current board member, would you please stand? If you are an advisory board member, would you please stand and remain standing, please? Um, if you are a former board member, and Mike Black is not here today, he's at a trade show, guy ran out on me. Um, if you're a former board member though with the Literacy Council, would you please stand? Mr. Bachman, I know you, Frank. Um, if you are a staff member, we did have some staff come with us today. Would you please stand? Uh, are there anyone, is there anyone who has been on a York County Literacy Committee or who um, is still on a York County Literacy Committee? Would you please stand? Thank you. Uh, is there, are there any tutors or volunteers, uh, students, any donors to the Literacy Council, that's cash or in kind, would you please stand? I know if you're not standing, because I know who you are. Um, if you uh, or your organization has ever volunteered or partnered with the Literacy Council to, uh, to make something happen for the benefit of the clients, would you please stand? Thank you. Um, Ann Druck, are you here? This one's for you, Anne. Okay, you ready? If you've ever given to the United Way Community Fund, we remember, I can call this, please stand. 46 years the way we could be receiving some of those funds. If you have ever uh, been a sponsor or a supporter of the stretch pool for Give Local York, can you please stand? All right, look at this room, yeah. Okay, stay standing and everybody look at Ben or by the screen. Okay, he's coming up here. Look at Ben and say, reading, yay. All right, thank you, thank you. Please have a seat while I give you a round of applause. I learned this in Boy Scouts. I was a Boy Scout troop leader, that, that's a round of applause. So thank you all for standing. Now, why was that important? Because I want you to recognize how you have been giving to uh, the Literacy Council and making the things that are, we're about to talk about, the, the programs I'm about to talk about and the success stories that you're about to see happen. Um, this is your success. And I hope that you realize that when you're, when you're helping an organization like ours. So, do I have the little blinky thing? Oh, I do. That's really not good. I've got to work and chew gum here. I don't know, Ben. Okay. Aha. The mission of the York County Literacy Council. We teach literacy skills in English that empower adults for successful engagement in the home, workplace, and community. Adults is a key word there. So what are we talking about? I think this is a really important distinction I need to tell you about. So when we talk about illiteracy, we're talking about people who cannot decode words. If you are completely illiterate, you cannot decode words, which means that you cannot figure out what those words mean and you cannot figure out the, what a paragraph or a book uh, would mean. But a person who is functionally illiterate, um, can't, they may be able to decode a word, to figure out what that word is, but have great difficulty putting meaning to that communication. And what is the 
And uh, why do we read and write? Throw it out there. Why do we read and write? To communicate, absolutely. I don't know who, what genius that was, but thank you very much. And to, to give meaning, right? We're trying to, I, it says right here, you will sit down in your chair, whatever chair that is, and you're reading that, um, you're conveying a meaning. So that is the important distinction. The Literacy Council works with both illiterate and functionally illiterate adults and a little bit higher. Um, here's some statistics. One in seven in York County is functionally illiterate. So reading at less than a fifth grade level. Um, what does that mean? Well, uh, that's about 40, 45,000 who are illiterate, functionally illiterate. And what does that mean to the business people in this room? Well, I'll tell you, illiteracy affects your bottom line. It affects the ability to be safe, to follow directions, the written directions. Uh, it can affect your productivity. And the Pew Research Firm did a study and said that if we were able to advance all adult literacy to a sixth grade level or higher, it would bring in 10, it would increase the GDP by 10%, 2.2 uh, $2 trillion in annual income in America just raising the levels of literacy for our adults. Um, Fortune 500 executives said that the illiteracy costs them in competitiveness and uh, in about two, $225 billion in lost productivity. Whoops, that's backwards, Ben, don't go there. Okay, um, so how do we address those things? Let me get to my page. Um, the York County Literacy Council currently has four active uh, programs. That is the adult reading program, the English as a second language program, the next step program, and literacy in the workplace or literacy in the community. And those are fee for services that I'll talk very briefly about. Um, in 2020, 2021, uh, the, the year of the great pandemic, um, we served 618 students a little bit fewer than we normally do. Those 600 students represented 45 different countries, which is about 30 or so national languages. Um, the majority, the demographics on those, the majority of them, 53% made less than 25,000 a year. They had a, a family income of less than 25,000 a year. Um, there were slightly more females than males like 68%. The largest group was Hispanic. The next group uh, at 24% were black, white 14% and Asian 6%. Intake levels for last year showed us that almost 50% of the students were reading at less than a third grade level. I'm sorry, a third grade level or less. Um, so what, what is that doing to your bottom line? Just think about that. So we had about 23% that were also reading between fourth grade and fifth grade level. And then 29% were reading at a sixth grade to eighth grade level. The newspaper for your information is written on a sixth grade level. If we could bring people again to that sixth grade level, they'd have a shot at decent, decent pay and decent jobs. Our normal enrollment is a thousand that's pre pandemic. And we are on track this year to meet those numbers again. We'll be, um, we're projecting about a thousand students. So what happens within those programs? Um, we do uh, standardized testing. The services are offered free and confidentially to the student. Any pictures that you see here are, have been okayed by the student. Um, we give them an educational plan. They are referred to other human service organizations or education agencies because if they need our services, it is most like, likely, likely blah, blah, that they need other services. Um, their program coordinators follow up with them, do evaluations consistently, uh, yearly testing, and um, make sure that they're progressing through the program. Students are placed either in a classroom, uh, which now, 
uh, thanks to COVID and the funding we received, uh, we have Zoom for education, which is the hybrid way that they are able to attend class, which helps a lot um, with those barriers to education. If they were not able to catch a bus or their car went bad or they have a sick child at home, they can tune into the classroom and see their teacher and work on their lessons. And that is an interactive classroom. Um, we also have uh, tutor matches. We train tutors from the community and they um, go through a 15 hour training and you'll see Rita, where is she? Over there. Uh, if you wanna be a tutor with the Literacy Council. And we also have long distance uh, online uh, learning opportunities. The tutors go through the comprehensive training, but they also receive in services or they have, and hopefully this and this year, we will be able to do that again. Um, we haven't been able to because of COVID, but they are in person and we're going to be working towards that this year. The first program, whoop, the first program I'm going to talk about is the adult reading program. Uh, this program is for English speakers who are 18 years or older, uh, and we focus on reading, writing, spelling, and math, and some computer skills. Um, there's four levels of instruction. That top level is that 50% we talked about. So they are learning phonetics. They are learning decoding words um, and grasping meaning. The prehistory, I'm sorry, pre-high school equivalency uh, at that level four to seven, those individuals are, are learning to uh, expand their vocabulary. They are working on grammar. They're working on comprehension skills. Um, then we have our high school equivalency classes. Uh, they focus on the high school equivalency test or what you would probably know as the GED. Um, that actually there's another test in the state of Pennsylvania called the HiSET. Uh, the York County Literacy Council is a HiSET testing facility. We're the only certified HiSET testing facility in York County um, for the HiSET. So the high school equivalency, they're working on science, social studies, uh, reading, math, writing. And then we also have the re-entry program. This is for individuals who have been or are part of the criminal justice system. We're trying to offer them to get them to a high school diploma. Uh, but we also have in there uh, foundation skills, workplace skills, what you would call uh, soft skills and um, hopefully taking them further. Uh, we also have a math class. That math class is wherever they need help. So from adding numbers, two numbers, uh, two to two plus two is gonna equal four, up to algebraic equations and not anything really complicated, but things that would be on the high school equivalency test. Um, and then tutoring is available. The first, a uh, success story I want to share with you. This is Sean. Uh, Sean came to the Literacy Council in 2017. He had passed his science, social studies, and language portions of the GED while he was serving time in York Prison. Um, he needed help. He, was, he got out and he needed help with his math, and he said that that was his weakest subject. Um, he was matched with a tutor. Rick and Sean worked on math for several months. Um, and then Sean took the math test uh, and he made sure that everyone knew that he got the highest of all four scores on his math test. So everyone was very pleased. Um, Sean recently reached out to us, uh, to the adult program manager and let her know that he, he just wanted to let her know he was doing well. That's all. And she asked him if he would share his story. So he shared that after his success with the GED, uh, feeling confident, he decided that he'd follow in his father's footsteps and get his CDL. Now I'm gonna read this and I do get choked up. So if I trip, please excuse me. I'm working for Kinsley Construction. I started out driving a dump truck with them and now I run a front end loader and I love it. I'm going on seven years being drug free and I'm a great father again. I spend time with my kids every night. I am happy, I'm just happy with my life now. I had had nothing good going for me, nothing to look up to, but after getting my diploma, it put a spark in me. I could get a good job now, and knowing that I had accomplished something made me accomplish lots of things. 
I know you guys are part here, Anne, I'm shouting out to you one more time. I know you guys are part of the United Way. So I donate money every week from my paycheck to the United Way. I just wanted to say thank you for everything. You changed my life and hopefully I could inspire someone else to change theirs. Sean is scheduled to speak at the United Way's leadership giving opportunity in May 25th. Okay, see Kim if you want more information. Um, I cry every time. <laughs> okay, the second program I wanna to talk to you about is our English as a Second Language program. These are the levels of classes that we offer. These individuals are, or these adults are usually 18 years or older. There's a, a few exceptions and I can explain why at another time. Um, we're teaching conversational English, but we're doing it under the topic headers of health literacy, financial literacy and workplace literacy. That's what they need to be successful here. Um, they range from non-English speakers uh, to high intermediate speakers. Well, we call that an advanced class because we ran out of intermediate names. Um, and by intermediate, uh, they are the intermediate, high intermediate, they're working on perfecting the grammar, their past, present and future tense, pronunciation, um, and then uh, focus on intonation because we wanna make sure that they have the right accent on the right syllable, okay? Okay, you're with me there. Um, we offer six levels of English as a second language class, pre-lit. Uh, they may or may not speak uh, any English or may not have any literacy training in their own native language. Um, then beginner's class, low intermediate, intermediate, advanced or high intermediate, and then citizenship class. This is kind of a new program for us, uh, several years, you know, probably six years old by now. Um, and we're helping them prepare for their citizenship test to become US citizens. Um, there's a test, there is an interview, uh, and then there's a lot of paperwork. And for the paperwork part, we refer them to our friends and uh, helpful community people at CASA or at PERC. Um, and then they could have the opportunity to be matched with a tutor. So let's see if this works. Um, this is Kathy, she is an ESL student. Ben, how do I make this happen? Thank you. Hi, my name is Kathy, I'm from Ecuador. And uh, I came free uh, here to this uh, wonderful place to learn English because I need, I feel like I need to improve to be a uh, help to my community and um, be better interaction with everybody. Actually, I came here uh, because I want to improve my skills to get a better job. And I found this uh, place by internet. It was very, I was looking for a place to improve my English and I, I found more than that. Actually, I am going to the city internship class during the night and um, they just helped me to improve my skill to find a better job. Thank you, Kathy. Um, that is a few uh, months after this interview. And because of this interview, the person who was doing the interview, some of you may know Deb Gogniak, she had a connection to someone at Wellspan. Kathy has a degree um, in psychology from Ecuador. And Deb was so uh, enamored with her, with her communications with her, and she visited for a while, um, that she introduced her to someone over at Wellspan. And that lady with the haircut up in the top right is Kathy in her new job. So, am I back on here? Yes, okay, the Next Step program. The Next Step program works on career exploration. Um, it's really workforce focused. The uh, coordinator will visit the classrooms and do some initial career exploration, um, but then they, the students have the opportunity to meet one-on-one -on -one and really do some significant work towards finding a career, finding out what that, honestly, what that career can pay for what what that pays as a salary, um, but also what type of education you need to be able to be successful in that career. Um, 
The Next Step program also has the foundations for success. Uh, those are uh, working, they're working on life skills and soft skills, which is what we've heard from the business community is really lacking in a lot of individuals. So that's a, a real focus area for us. They also work on uh, interviews and resume writing and then business etiquette, um, how to dress, how to appropriately respond. Um, when funds are available, uh, we have a couple of foundation for success classes that happen. Uh, we work with partners in the community right now in the healthcare class, uh, health, health fields. Uh, we are working with um, York County School of Technology. I almost called them Votech, sorry. York County School of Technology, and they have five different medical fields, um, but some of the students who are with them don't have some of the basic languages, uh, language for a medical field or a basic understanding of those words or, uh, and or uh, the basic math that they need to, you know, I need one half teaspoon plus one half teaspoon. How many am I going, how many teaspoons am I giving to this individual? We certainly want them to know that, especially when I get there, okay. All right, the next student we'll share here is Lily. Um, actually, Lily came to us in 2013. She was an English as a second language student. She was a high, high intermediate student. Um, she uh, took English classes. She eventually started working with a tutor and attending classes. Um, her goals were to get a job and become a U.S. citizen. She was born in China. Uh, to a farming family. And so her dream of going to college was kind of out of reach. Um, she met and married an American. They lived in China for quite a while, but then they decided to come to the United States. In 2014, um, Lily uh, got a job as a gemologist, I kid you not, at uh, Diamond Store. And uh, she's very good at it. She's very pretty. So she was great at her job. Uh, she was able to sell and she knew what she was talking about. She also received her US citizenship. Um, she was dual enrolled at the York County Literacy Council in our high school equivalency classes. Um, and then in 2016, she earned her GED or her high school equivalency diploma. Um, in 2016, so she had her diploma, she decided she would go to Hack, which was one of her dreams, right? So she enrolled in Hack as, um, and got an associate's in business uh, in 2018. Um, in between then, she got her Pennsylvania driver's license. This is all with the help of her tutor or from her classes. Um, and then in 2017 and 2020, she was awarded the Blattner Scholarship, which is through the Next Step program. Those are $500 scholarships um, for, towards her education. Uh, in December of 2021, I had the great honor of seeing Lily walk the stage at Penn State University Harrisburg graduation ceremony. Um, you can see her in the black there. She's got her International Honor Society cords on, um, and she was uh, thrilled. Her parents were here from China, uh, and she and her tutor and her uh, representative, from, representative from HACC were there to applaud her, and I was so happy to be part and be asked to, to be a part of that. She was awarded um, the bachelor's in business administration right before she graduated from Penn State. She opened her own business. Um, it is called the Social Shopper app. And if you wanna know more about that, see Martin, because I don't truly understand it. Um, <laughs> something about shopping. Um, and she's, she was just a delight. Uh, we also offer literacy in the workplace or literacy in the community. These are fee-for-service opportunities where we will go into a business who's seeing communication issues, overages, safety issues, um, need to study for an exam, uh, uh, OSHA exam or a food safety exam. Um, and a business will bring us in, we'll tailor make a curriculum for their employees, provide the service on site. Um, it's, it's very popular when uh, there's a lot of pressure on their, their testing portion. Um, I already mentioned the high set. We are the only high set testing facility in York. And um, I think we've got that. Okay. 
This is our support, our income. Uh, you can see that we receive a lot of funding from a lot of different sources. That is really good when you're in the pandemic year, when your special events tank and your um, grants and your funders understand that and they open up uh, uh, grant opportunities a little bit more. Um, and did I mention in this year, we also moved to a new location. So uh, yeah. Um, I want to give a shout out here to Mr. Tony Campisi. Thank you, sir, for chairing our literacy empowerment campaign for 2022. We really appreciate that. Um, leave your phones on when you leave today. No, the campaign is a couple months away. I will just leave your phones on later. Okay. Um, there is here are our expenditures. You can note here that uh, 75% of our expenditures go towards program, uh, about 25% are for support, support services. Okay, quick peek. Um, this is the Literacy Council's new home uh, before these wonderful people got a hold of it and Kinsley Construction. This is Murphy and Dittenhafer team and then Kinsley Construction helped with the build out. So welcome to the York County Literacy Council. Um, we are at 1416 Sixth Avenue. We're in the Graham Building. Uh, I hope that you'll be able to attend the Rotary Networking. There's information on your table about that. These benches were made by board member Matt Hartman right here in front. Not only did he make them, he set them and um, he donated all that work. The other thing uh, to note is those beautiful flowers were planted by United Way Day of Action volunteers. Um, and then we're hoping those tulips come up soon if it could stop the snow. Um, this is our lobby, Whoop, our lobby from another direction. This is the student entrance. You'll see the kiosk, their temperatures are taken. And eventually when we figure out how, um, they will start taking attendance. Um, I show this picture of the hallway because I love these floors. Uh, this is all designed by Murphy and Dittenhafer. This classroom is the Donna and Bob Pulo classroom. Uh, they dedicated that room for us. And if you note on the, the left-hand side there, that is a retractable wall. So this room can literally become double the size. And when you come for rotary networking, that's where you'll be. So we'll have enough social distance between us. That's the other side of that classroom. There are four dedicated classrooms and they all have some type of technology. You'll see the smart boards um, in this room and there are the projector and screen in the other rooms. Um, those are so that we can zoom in students and utilize the uh, internet for education. Let's see where I am at here. This is the uh, People's Bank Computer Lab a beautiful hallway. The floors aren't so great here, but I do like the color of the walls. Um, this is our reception area uh, and a, a typical office. Um, this is our community office. This is available to anyone uh, for free, anyone who is interested in um, working with our clients or if you have clients on the far side of town that you would like to meet in this space, it is free. Um, the only thing we need is proof of insurance and some information about what you do um, and so that we can share that with our clients. And this beautiful large space is actually not that big. Um, this is my office. This is the executive director's office. And I put it here because it was not only is it beautiful, uh, but uh, Steve Harrison, Rotarian Steve Harrison sponsored this room in be on behalf of and honor of his father, his late father. Um, and you might know him, Ernest Harrison. He was a professor at PSU. Again, I mentioned that the Rotary Networking is happening on March the 18th at noon. Lunch will be provided. There's flyers on your table. How did I do? Thank you. See Rob Bowen. Um, and then the other hat that I'm wearing today is uh, I am on the Rotary Literacy Committee and Rotary Literacy and Lend a Hand Committees are joining together. You heard last week for the 3B Challenge. Uh, that's books, blankets, and bucks. Guess where you come in? Yes, okay. Um, I believe we're raising $2,500. I should have confirmed that with Deb, but I do believe that that is the figure that we're, we're trying to raise. There are 120 children that we want to donate um, books to and blankets. 
and we do need some funds for that. And then there are some other part of that budget that is for ROAR. If you don't remember, ROAR is Reach Out and Read, and it started here about six years ago, I think. Um, and it landed at the United Way in their focus program. Um, it is where doctors, in a, during a regular doctor visit, give the parent and the child a book to read at home. Um, and the reason that's important is, oops, hold on a second. I have to get to that note. There was a study done, a two-year study done, <clears throat> that said that, <clears throat> that a, if a home has uh, a home library, a, uh, I'm sorry, let me read it again. A two decade long study found that a mere presence of a home library increases the student's academic success, vocabulary development uh, and attention and eventually job attainment. Um, the York Literacy Committee and Lend a Hand Committee are, yes, are looking for $2,500 and, um, that that's it for the for those. Now I hope you enjoyed this presentation and um, learned a little bit more about the Literacy Council and why this community has been extremely supportive. And I do thank you for that. Um, I want to uh, hold on. Ben, is this it? Okay. <laughs> I want to thank you because. Um, as I said in the beginning, the successes of the students, the successes uh, of the program, uh, the move, that was all with you. That's, that's yours. So what you gave to this organization, all of the you standing individuals, thank you so much for your support. Um, what you truly give, no matter what that is, your time, your energy, it comes back and it helps others. And I hope you can realize that, that you're making a difference in the lives of our community. Thank you. Jackie says I can have one question. I told her I was going to go long. She needed a hook. Does anybody have any questions for me? Jim, I can see him. He sees, he's he's going to raise his hand. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you don't want to ask it. So the question is, is all volunteering service going on at our new location? No, um, we pay our instructors. They are on site and that is happening at, at the site. But the volunteer services, which is tutoring, can happen anywhere in a public site, um, anywhere in the county. And we do that because for convenience, right? So we don't wanna have to have a person who's living in Dover meet with a, a tutor who's working out of Hanover and where do they meet? So um, we try to match them as closely as possible. We do have a few rooms for tutor matches, but we don't have um, all of those matches. I think there's 60 happening. Oh, and my, my, my guy left. He had to go get a root canal. He told me that this would be easier. Um, so anyway, thank you so very much for your attention. Literacy truly is the key to almost anything in life. So anything you can achieve, it's, it's through that ability to be able to read. Thank you for dedicating your life to this critically important work and for the many opportunities that you provide for lives that will be changed. So thank you, Bobby, very much. Bobby signed the book plate for the book, The Oldest Student, How Mary Walker Learned to Read by Rita Lorraine Hubbard, which we will donate to McKinley Elementary School in the city of York. Next week, we'll hear from Glenn Talia, Chief Legal Counsel for Weather, Space Services and Research for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Glenn's presentation will provide a brief overview of NOAA, from daily weather forecasts, severe storm warnings and climate monitoring, to fisheries management, coastal restoration, and supporting marine and space commerce. NOAA's products and services support economic vitality and affect more than one third of America's gross domestic product. 
In addition, Glenn's presentation will explain the important role NOAA plays in supporting the growing US space industry and the developing and regulating of international space commerce. Now, due to current workloads, Glenn won't be able to personally be with us in the room, but he'll be coming into us virtually. So we're going to have our normal gathering next week. So please plan to be here and, and he'll be coming into us via Zoom. Um, and please note that there are a lot of other great programs happening this month. In closing, I thought it was appropriate since it's March Madness uh, to quote one of men's college basketball legends, Coach Dean Smith. There's a point in every contest when sitting on the sidelines is not an option. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks for being here.